Yeah, I'll, yeah. I got more work I can go back and do tonight. All right. Thank you. Ready? Yep. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday, July 13th, 2022 Orange Board of Selectmen meeting. For those in the audience, in the event of an emergency, there is one access where to my right, the audience is left that will lead you up the stairway to the rear parking lot. If for some reason you can't travel that, you can go straight down the hallway, out the back, which will put you out by the side of the firehouse, or you could go up the stairs with the clock on the wall and through the double doors and out the front, we'll put you out in front of the town hall. With that said, please stand for the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we'll start on my right tonight, down the end. P.J. Shanley. Good evening, Judy Williams. Ann Denny, Secretary to the Board. John Carangelo. Mitch Goldblatt. Okay, very good. Uh, tonight we have a public hearing to start off. We had one last month and this one kind of leans into that one. So is there a motion to close the regular meeting and to convene the public hearing? So moved. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, this public hearing is for the purpose of establishing a new ordinance regarding the Orange Town Code Chapter 350 regarding authorization to waive property taxes of $25 or less submitted by tax collector Mr. Hurley. You have it in front of you in this black pamphlet for those of you who hadn't opened that yet. And uh, I don't know if any or all of you have read that. You remember, recall it from last month. Uh, Mr. Hurley. Mr. Hurley, would you like to come to the podium to explain your presentation. Tom Hurley, town tax collector. Uh, for those of you who want, we do have handouts so you can follow on the edge over here. You can pick one up and, and look at it. I was asked at the last meeting to give a little more breakout in detail of why we need this. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, Mr. Goldblatt uh, talked about the breakpoints and what would make sense and whatever. After doing an analysis, uh, by the way, you can pass those notebooks around if you want to take a quick look at it. Those are our actual data points. Uh, there's about 100 and almost 150 pages worth of data for the last three years. So uh, for this report, I looked at the last three years. So we're looking at General Ledger 2019, General Ledger 2020, and General Ledger 2021, which is the latest tax bills. Uh, long and the short of it is 13.5% of my work product generates 0.024% of the budget. Uh, it's a bit unwise to be spending that much time on that little nugget of information. Bottom line is when I take all the direct costs off right away, it's maybe sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars a year in total revenue that you might get, and then I haven't even looked at the indirect costs, which are uh, substantial or can be substantial at the time. And uh, there are basically two types of uh, transactions that we worry about. First was the original billing. Those are type one. So when you read in here and you're looking at type one, those are generating your first set of bills. Type two are when somebody comes in and they leave the cents off their check and I got a 55 cent difference and the postage stamp is going to cost me 58 cents. Uh, I'll take that back, 60 cents now. Uh, in order to try and collect it, plus the cost of the envelope, plus the time and everything else. So when I looked at this, 
it really came down to the average cost is about $12.60 for these thousand transactions, ranging from about 95 cents to a few that are up around $24.99. So we're really talking about de minimis revenue coming from these things and a, a lot of work entailed in clogging my office because processing the checks and everything else for a nine, for a nine dollar item is the same as if it was a nine hundred thousand dollar item it doesn't make any difference to me but it does clog and slow everything down uh, just today uh, we were going through uh, the uh, we're still processing by the way the June payments <laughs> uh, that are coming in and I had one that was a nine dollar and forty cents that was mistyped in as ninety dollars and forty cents and we had to go back and fix it okay I mean it's it's these little things that just slow us down in getting the bills that mean something to the town processed uh, I'd like to direct your attention to table seven which is in your back it's the pretty colored one okay you can see on the side of table seven it's uh, page 16 in your folders. Uh, the break points, so we're looking at bills less than a dollar up to less than $25. What I'm really going to direct your attention to is the end columns in the weeks of effort to process. What, we, what I did was I figured an average of three minutes a transaction. Some of them go a little faster than that. Some of them take a heck of a lot longer than that. The small ones tend to be quicker, but it, they still gonna take that. So what I did is I figured out uh, the number of hours it takes to process each one of those break points. So as you can see at less than 25, uh, the average hours is 239.45. That's how many hours it takes us to process those. Uh, one machine, that's going to take me about 6.39 weeks to process just the less than uh, 24.99. If I do it on two machines, which we had active up until recently, that's about three weeks. Okay? And we just got a third machine in. Uh, we're just breaking it in right now, and that would get that back to 2.13. But if we take a look, we're estimating around 11,500 total bills. So that says it's going to take me about seven and two-thirds of a week to process just the July bills right now. Okay, that means I'm three weeks in August because we really didn't start anything in June, which we're looking at. By the way, the June collection project is very successful and still ongoing. Uh, we start, we, we've recorded at least 2.8 million people or dollars uh, came in from people and taxpayers, and I still got two more boxes to go, so it's going to go over three, I'm sure. Uh, with the third machine, uh, that's assuming I could get somebody on there full time, which I really can't, but it drops this whole thing down for the total bills of five weeks. If I take the ones off I want to get rid of, it gets me down to 4.47 weeks, which is a much more reasonable number. Now, these are all estimates, of course. Uh, things are tending to get more expensive, not less expensive. Uh, we have taken steps to try and minimize billing records. If you take a look down at uh, the billing records, we have 22,040 billing records this year that we're processing. We use something called a QNEST, which is a QDS feature, which is a quality data uh, services uh, software we use for collecting taxes to try and merge some of these bills so that, and people have seen this. So if you've got two cars, it's on one bill instead of two separate bills like we did last year and you have all that extra paper so we're trying to do things to cut it down but that's what cuts it down to that 11,500 number and everything that we have under 2499 just sneaks in wherever it wherever it gets attached to and it's one more thing we have to deal with uh, 
I consider that a bit unwise from an operational point of view that we're spending so much time on these. Uh, but unless I get direction from by town ordinance from this board, I can't do anything about it. I have to keep being inefficient. So I'm asking uh, that this ordinance be passed. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, please ask. Okay, any questions for Mr. Hurley, who would like to start? Mitch? A couple things. Tom, first of all, thank you very much for, A, addressing my concerns at the last meeting, giving me a call in the meantime. We went through a number of things. Um, <clears throat> I'm still a little bit, I have two, two major questions. Uh, the one is I'm still a little bit confused as to why the last last meeting we would want to not refund people five dollars and under but yet want to not bill twenty five dollars and under why would that not be five and five or twenty five and twenty five it's the first question the second question which you i think started to address in your in your uh, pamphlet you passed out we, we had privy to see this before tonight's meeting which was very helpful how we deal with the person that short changes you on purpose okay mm -hmm. if i have a hundred dollar bill and i pay you eighty five dollars you're not going to come back after me for the 15, because now he's under 25. So I mean, yes. that that is that is a concern that I wouldn't do this, but I think there are some people would say, well, I can get away with a lower tax bill by 25 dollars by not paying less than 25 dollars. Um, that's left. Technically, and I, I think that, that that to me that's. Well, I understand the the concern about what it takes to collect mm -hmm. that. It also invites some some fraud. Of course, you just told the whole town how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there are people out there smarter. When it comes to fraud, in, in, PJ, there's people out there smarter than me. That, that is in why. That, in, that, in that instance, however, if it was real estate and motor vehicle, it would roll forward to the next bill. It would it would carry forward on there, so it would still be a balance due on their previous bill. So, Jim, that, uh, excuse me one second, that, that then triggers the next question. If it, if it can roll forward, why don't we just take all the bills under 25, not bill them, but then roll them forward the next year, and then when it's over 25? And that way, because the problem is, I understand yeah. your concerns. <laughs> the problem is that by taking away $16,000, $20,000 worth of billing, everybody else is going to have to pay for that. That's not going to lower the mill rate. That's going to be you know, s somehow has to either be written off, which I don't think we do, or we raise everybody else's bills by a little bit more. Uh, that, that is a concern. Uh, let's deal with, the, uh, with that particular item. One of the things I specifically requested in writing the ordinance is discretion. If I find that or I think somebody is doing that, you know, I'll collect it. I mean, I'm not going to look and have somebody purposely time after time. I mean, if this is a onesie thing for them, uh, for, you know, they, they left their cents off the check. Okay. I can roll that forward, but they're going to get an immediate $2 charge for minimum interest on that 55 cents. So their bill is going to go up. We don't rebuild them. So they're going to come in in January paying the amount that we said they should owe, they're going to come up short, and that's when it gets them. Unless it's a motor vehicle, because that's a one-payment system. Right, so there's nothing to move forward or, or roll forward on any of that. The other thing is, is I cannot roll forward over general ledger years. So you miss the payment in January, i got to collect it. Technically, I have to file delinquency notices if you miss the first half of your payments on real estate or personal property. And that includes the ones that get missed because, oh, this is insignificant, it's only $9.40, I'll get around to it sooner or later. And we have an awful lot of those, especially with your small house businesses, home businesses in particular, uh, and uh, with your de minimis value motor vehicles sitting, sitting around out there that are, you know, your antiques and whatever. That would fall in uh, might might fall under that category. Uh, so motor vehicles is a particular problem for us, because while we can stop them from re-registering the vehicle, people forget to register their vehicles. 
and we're even finding this year because of COVID and everything else, people have missed registering their vehicles. They register them late, which means we don't even get, begin collecting the revenue until the December billing cycle. And we've, we've noticed that big time this year. Uh, so, uh, and, and we're getting calls that we have to answer for that particular problem. But again, uh, you, you asked the other question about the five and five. They're not a comparable number, okay? Uh, the reason I came up with the average that told you that the whole 24 is 1260, you can find whatever the average is by looking at the revenue versus cost column. You can walk down that number uh, and you can see that uh, you're going to get de minimis amount of relief to my office with those smaller amounts. Let's look at the less than five and run across that. 0 0.09 weeks would be saved maybe 0 0.06 if I could get the third system up and fully running. That's not going to, that, that's not going to solve my problem. So it's not a, it's not a direct comparison. I don't write bills. I don't do a lot of things that I have to do to collect for people that are on the other side of the coin that we owe money. I'm not out there beating the bushes to give town money away. Okay. If you've got $400 and you're uh, over there, by all means, we're going to send you the form. We're going to process it. You're going to sign the form. It comes back, and you, re as the board, those are things you have to review every month that we bring before the board. Matter of fact, you probably have one tonight, I believe. Okay? Watch for the ones that are $4, $5, $9. Those are all taking up your time to review and look at. So it's not just my time. It's not just the assessor's time. It's my whole staff's time, and we've got to hope that the post office is very efficient uh, in getting these things out because we know we've been having some problems with the post office lately. John, did you have a comment? I did. It was actually directed to both of you. Um, so since this discussion has taken place, have you received any comments from residents, complaints about potentially doing this? I mean, I personally have not received a single phone call about this issue. Oh, it's on. It's green. I know it's Ralph's seat, but it's on. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. That was <laughs> out of line, Mitch. Um, so I, I just want to hear from you whether you've heard anything or, or whether the only, Mr. Zioli has heard anything. The only thing I have heard is nothing but complaints about paying four dollars and a quarter five dollars or whatever when something gets missed and then they have to go through and get rebuilt again it's an annoyance tax well, at that point to we, them we have heard from um, probably a half a dozen people that uh, do not agree with the twenty five dollar amount um, that feel it is a larger amount and quite honestly I think that uh, you know, especially under the current economic times, giving away any money that, um, you know, the town has figured into a revenue process, I think could be a little bit uh, uh, reckless. Um, even the chairman of the Board of Finance sent me an email today that he's not in support of the $25 amount. Um, Mr. Houlihan, I heard from him uh, this morning, actually. So, um, yes, there are some. I haven't heard anybody championing for it that think that it's good. I did hear from, you know, like I said, a half a dozen that uh, think 25 is too high a number. There were some suggestions. They were all fives and tens, the suggestion numbers. I think I don't think Kevin actually gave a number, but he did not agree with the 25 cap. BJ. Um, Tom, yes. is that state legislation that won't allow you to roll it forward, or is that something that we could maybe look at? changing uh ourselves. we don't cross general ledgers i don't know you'd have to talk to the finance director about i think that. rolling it forward would probably be the easiest solution if that was something that we'd be able to do mm. well it's carried as debt right i mean it should appear on their following tax uh their status when they come in to pay um may even be on their new bill as it goes out each end of june um what their balance is that they owe so it should be on there and that would that crosses over from the well yeah but yeah. keep in mind yeah. that at that point you have spent 
two more delinquency notices, and if it's a motor vehicle, four more delinquency notices, four more mailings have all occurred. Well, how about if we don't do that? We, you know, if, if it's, an, how about we, so we say, we pick a number, whatever that number is, and we say if it's under 25, 16, whatever the number is, we don't send those notices, we don't charge them any interest on it, and they just have to pay it next year. It just walks away, it, under, like say if it was under five like we did last month, it would just walk away, it, it vanishes anyhow. Mm -hmm. Anything delinquent beyond that is going to come forward when they come to pay their bill because when one of the employees in that office goes on the computer to accept their payment, right. it's going to appear. Right, but that Tom's they, point was he has to send those delinquency notices. So. Well, motor vehicles, you don't have to send out four for one because you can send them out one notice mm -hmm. And um, when it comes due to re-register their car, they're not going to be able to register their car if he, right. as tax collector, files the paperwork that says taxes are due. Whether it's $4 or $400, right. they won't be able to register their car, and then they will come in and pay. Mitch is seeing this. I've seen this over the years. And so that's a way um, to deal with the motor vehicle May, may I that. just address that for a minute, Jim? Sure. We have a lot of people leaving the state leaving the town and their bills are uncollected if I don't send those delinquency notices right now I've even begun sending out constables because I can't wait for the three-year renewal cycle uh, to finally catch up when somebody says oh I got to register my car and I got tax bills by the time that happens we're losing a lot of revenue okay those cars are gone I have little chance of collecting it I'm at the goodwill of somebody if I actually find where they went so there's a lot more to that <laughs> uh, by trying to let things roll forward on a motor vehicle. A absolutely not. That, that's not the way to go on that one. Uh, it's hard enough collecting what we've got right now because that's more or less what has been done in the past. And uh, it's even been done with people in town. They say, oh, you know, hey, I'm not registering my car this year, so I'm not paying the tax. So then the town doesn't get the revenue in the year it's supposed to get it. Um, I'm seeing a lot of this right now. Uh, and uh, basically, that attitude has to be curbed somehow in there. That does not necessarily apply to this discussion. But uh, motor vehicles are a pain in my side right now. Tom, I think you may be confusing the issue, and you just said that maybe two different issues. I think what Jim was getting at, and I think, was not, not sending delinquencies and chasing the under, whether it's 25 or whatever, mm -hmm. certainly chase the ones that, that you know, you should have to chase anyway. I mean, we want, we want that revenue. We do rely on the revenue, and you're right. Because everything's in arrears, mm -hmm. and because people get a tax bill several months after they've sold the car or moved out of Absolutely. state, or even out of town, <laughs> it's, it's a problem. But one other thing I want to address with you, Tom, is you put in here giving yourself some discretion. And one th and it's a double-edged sword because one thing about the tax collector, and this goes throughout the state, and you know this, is tax collectors have very little discretion if, and basically no discretion. So, and Jim's had this happen. I'm sure it happened to me when I was first selectman. People walked down the hall after the tax collector's office and marched into the first selectman's office upset because they got charged a late fee, upset because they got charged because they were two days late, upset because of this, that, and the other thing. Yep. And the answer was always the same. I'm sorry, but by state statute, there is no discretion. And while that bodes poorly for the politicians who like to help people, it protects you so that PJ doesn't come in and get one answer, Judy doesn't come in and get another answer. And if you're giving yourself discretion here, you're opening yourself up to, you know, and you may have an absolutely legitimate reason for waiving one and not waiving another, but the taxpayer who didn't get waived is not going to see that. And you or your deputies, whoever you've got in the it. office, are going to hear about it. And then Jim's going to hear about it because, you know, favoritism is coming out of the tax collector's office. So I'm real concerned about the discretionary part of that. I understand why you want it. I understand that because you want to be able to clear a de minimis if it's if it makes sense to clear not clear somebody who's cheating the system so to speak but you're setting yourself up for some real issues and i i'm very leery of that specific part of this this request well the the other thing is is we could try it for a year 
and to revisit it if there's a problem. I mean, that's, that's another way of seeing whether that's really an issue or not. Uh, mm -mm. You can't have it both ways, Mitch. You can't have people gaming the system and not being able to have that stopped versus other people who have a legitimate issue uh, to waive it. Uh, I would like to direct one other thing. Take a look, uh, $10 was mentioned here, and if you go across that line, it makes about a week's worth of difference in our processing our bill. So you're not getting the maximum bang for your buck. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you, you could do nothing, and we're just going to continue to be inefficient in the office and, and spend it. So uh, I, I hope you guys can come to some agreement on a number. Uh, whether you want to give me discretion to do it or whether it's just going to automatically happen and invite the condition that you talked about, Mitch, that's always a possibility, too. John, so. John, you want Excuse me. You, yes. you want to try something? Yes. And I think if, we want, if this board is willing to try something, I would still roll back to the $5, and I would take away that discretion. And I think you're going to be, mm -hmm. I think you're going to be better off. I think the $5, people can see that. I know you see that there's, there's a, it's apples and oranges, but I think people will see we're going to waive the $5 on one end, we're going to wave it on the other. It's going to, it's going to look, it's going to be equal. And you know, Tom, somehow, some way, for 200 years, we've collected taxes in this town, and and I know it's been a problem, but it hasn't been insurmountable. So I don't think it's insurmountable now. And I think that I, I appreciate what you've brought forward to us. I agree that there's a, a lot of time and effort wasted on some de minimis things, but when we come out of the public hearing. That would be my suggestion, and we'll see how the board okay. feels. I would like to bring more attention to the actual number that you select, okay? Take a look at the revenue versus cost. We know that the 05 was about $250 difference. 253, I think we, we quoted, right? I would need at least $6, and that's only half of the revenue on the top end. That's 10451 on average. The next big break is at seven dollars, and that's where you, you have a 172729. And keep in mind that does not include indirect costs, but you're still spending money. I, th I think that is there anybody in the audience here to speak on this issue? Okay, seeing none. Um, I think that you have come to your terms, I have a feeling here on this. Um, I don't think we analyze any department in the town that the efficiency of that department is become to such a worrisome point that it's going to take seven point weeks, six days, or four weeks and five days to process this. I think that we have people in these offices that are continually doing what their job is in their department here. And I think the tax office is one of those. Um, I think that that's more than fair. I think we've beaten that part of this. I think that uh, I'd like to hear from the board. Is there any sort of a consensus from you? We've heard Mr. Hurley's argument. Did you I, say that, I'm sorry, did you say sure. um, that Kevin recommended a number or not? He did not put a number in, but he didn't agree with the, he thought the 25 number, as I recall, was too high. Do you think it would be prudent to reconvene with the Board of Finance and No, I think there? this group can okay. come up with that decision. I think we did that last month, right. and it worked out pretty well. And I think that uh, uh, this group tonight um, We're smart enough. Would, would be able to, <laughs> would be able to <laughs> understand that. I think we got some pretty good brains at the table here. I don't know if there's a consensus between you. You've heard what Mitch's thoughts are. I don't know what Judy, PJ, and John are thinking. Well, we haven't come to a consensus yet here, so um, before you do that, I mean, in I mean, case just, it needs to be hashed out more, you want to... Uh, you you can't I was going to say, just looking yet. at the numbers, it looks like either $11 or 16 to me. So 16 nets out to about five grand. And 11, that's out to about 2,100. 
Chairman. Uh, John, do you have thoughts on this, or Judy? I haven't heard from either one of you yet on this. No. I mean, first off, Tom, yes, this has been obviously a lot of work put into this, a lot of work, and I and I don't, I don't diminish it, because seriously, this is very well put out. But I agree. I think, um, I think we've been doing well. I think the tax office has been running as smooth as it can, um, and I think there's going to be little gaps. But I think if we set ourselves up for a more definitive way of saying we're going to overlook this, overlook that. I think, I think that adds more time. So I would either like to do just a solid five bucks. We have that on the table. We either you know, get it or we don't and, and just make it easy on everybody instead of trying to really kind of get it down to is this $11 or is it, is it $10.59 or, you know, I just think make well, it smoother. whatever the make number it is, it's it's the same amount of work. Right, so, right, right. I mean, it, it, the staff will follow whatever the direction yeah, you I give just, us is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think you know we're we're trying hard to to get our revenue in. We're trying very hard to make it so that everybody is going to be willing to pay their taxes. So, I, I think just kind of keeping it status quo is almost a, a nice idea. I mean, I agree with all the comments of the board, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I do think that um, I'm most concerned about the perception um, of potential favoritism for individual taxpayers and how that will affect um, not only the tax collector, but the administration as a whole, because you just don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Obviously, you two gentlemen have sat in this position before, and you know uh, what happens so that's my biggest concern so I'm more inclined to say let's give a, a, a small amount five dollars no discretion and leave it at that um, I think that may be at least something um, to knock off the books um, see but how it, it works yeah. Yeah. yeah so that would be my my two cents Mr. O'Sullivan Yeah. Sure you Auditors, I don't know. Uh, attorney, I know, has looked at it. Uh, this is under 12144C of the Connecticut General Statutes that authorizes this. So we are under okay. state law. So is there any more discussion here and nobody in the audience? Is there um, more? No? Is there then a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Okay. Is there Thank you. Thanks, thanks Tom. Tom. Is Thank you. is there motion um, to be made regarding this request by the tax collector? No, I was just ready. like Jeopardy. I'll make the motion. I'll make a motion. We'll see if it passes. Um, that um, based on the request of the tax collector that we authorize the tax collector to waive property taxes of $5 or less. Um, and I know there was a part in that that mentioned discretion, but there'd be no discretion. Okay. So strike that line, however, yeah. that verbiage. Yeah, it wasn't correct. really in the, I don't know how the ordinance was. At. Is there an actual? I think if you look at the request, it's sitting at the bottom. So excuse me, Tom, where, where is that on oh, our pages? Oh, here. Page. Oh, separate page. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, at their individual discretion to waive the tax bill and collection of bills. Okay. 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 Um, so are we, are we using that? Or so let me try this then. Um, it would read Chapter 350-36 for Connecticut General Statute Section 204, Section 12-144C, optional waiver of property tax under... Uh, da, 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 da. That, that's that's the so we want to be resolved. So even though the the hang on a second, is that what it's, <laughs> <sighs> we may need Vinny here. Um, I, I, wherever it fits into our mm. our ordinances, that the town's tax assessor and tax collector by this action are delegated 
delegated to waive the tax billing and collection of bills and resi residual bills on amounts of $5 or less. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm just reading that second line mm -hmm. and, and removing the removing at the their individual discretion, which is between the commas. Okay. Yep. Second. So, so I'll repeat that. The town's tax assessor and tax collector by this action are delegated to waive the tax billing and collection of bills and residual bills on amounts of $5 or less. Okay. All right. That'd be the motion. Everybody in agreement with that? I second it. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Okay. It's done. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Okay. Let us know how you do it, Tom. <laughs> Thank you very yeah, much. Thanks. Track it. <laughs> Track it, yeah. Okay. Public participation. Public participation is for any item that's not an agenda item and allowed <laughs> up to two minutes per speaker. Yeah, well, you're not I, really oh, on yeah, Here's the most recent email. Tom Paisano, 523 Fairway Road, Orange, Connecticut. Um, I'm just looking for a little help on three items. Um, there's a lot of confusion about the uh, land at Fred Wolf Park. Uh, I do have in my hand original survey maps. Uh, it was actually during this, the time the Amity School System owned it. And, and we do own um, 14 acres there that are currently farmed for corn and some 67 acres originally, uh, and, and the park has grown. Uh, at any rate, the confusion was that people didn't think we own that land. We do, and actually we have leases that have been given out for 22 years, every two years, to several people. That particular parcel keeps given out to uh, Fieldview Farm, uh, Walt, uh, Walt uh, Hein, but I don't think he, he farms it anymore. Um, but and, and that, that's fine. The uh, question I had and the help I need is I'm working with the Park and Rec Department, and at this point, um, we'd like to do the next phase at Fred Wolf Park, which includes this 14.4 uh, acres of land. Um, the lease that's there right now uh, is terminating as of December uh, 2022. The uh, requirement would be, um, and Vin's not here to, to even acknowledge this, but the requirement would be to give a 180 day notice prior to that termination so that we can proceed with the next phase of Fred Wolf Park. So that's something I just need help with, and perhaps Vinny and Park and Rec Department uh, would have to present that further. Um, we also had a question. Last meeting, everybody was applauding because our multi-use field was being used uh, by a group. They're actually from Milford. They came to me. They, they, they told me the field is unplayable. I told them to go to uh, uh, Dan Lynch and work with him uh, if they want to use other properties. Um, so. I, that's all I can say is it, it's, it was a $70,000 investment. I would hope somebody uses it. Uh, other than that, I, I think we do need help at Fred Wolf Park. Uh, we are making um, uh, achievements, uh, new roads and what have you. I do think uh, some thought should be given to traffic uh, there. We have a lot of cars going in and out, and eventually we're going to have two-way roads. So if you have any questions, I am available 24-7. I get a lot of emails and a lot of uh, uh, questions to me, I will forward them on to the selectmen, uh, certainly from now on. Okay? Thank you for your time. And again, if you have any questions, I will be here all night. Tom, you sat here last month, and you chose not to speak when asked to speak regarding a curbing bid for over there. And it was explained at that time exactly how that driveway from Hollow Road was changing what the purpose of it was and the discussion that was had. You were asked if you wanted to have input at that time on that and you said no and some other snarky answer and stormed away. If you were listening, you heard the explanation of the curbing and the changing of that entry to create an intersection in that lot where the road will meet the a new driveway that will exit to Oak View and the road that feeds to the lacrosse side of the field and what will feed to the soccer side. It was discussed right here at this table one month ago and you sat in that chair right over there. And then you stand here tonight and you make 
like nothing was ever discussed of it. Well, that's you, correct. you seem to hear what you want to hear, and you seem to profess what you seem to think is fact in your mind, but you don't seem to listen to what this board has discussed, what they have approved for bidding. Your most recent email, you know, you talk about uh, Jim Zioli thinks he owns the town and the rest of us should be glad to, we live in his town. Jim Zioli doesn't own the town or any part of glad it. Glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you keep professing this stuff. You even had an email out there worrying about my grass wasn't cut that I heard about at the fireworks the other night. I waited for a drive shaft for the mower for almost three weeks. I, I didn't. Then we cut the grass. Somebody, if you are so possessed that you're going to be worried about Jim Zioli, you really ought to consider getting some help for yourself huh? because Jim Zioli goes through this board for every piece of work and process that has been done there so far and will continue to be done there will go through this board of selectmen elected by the residents of the town of Orange. That's for some reason, you like to profess as if I do it single-handedly. Not one thing has been done single-handedly without discussion of this board of selectmen. So hear stop that. trying to profess bullshit out there <laughs> that is not factually correct. No, I'm glad I can Just get to you. Just stop it. I'm glad I can get to you. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a cut of the, uh, uh, and, and wasn't, wasn't given the park and rec of the uh, curb layout. Uh, actually, no, one, you were offered it, and you turned it down. No, Last I, month in this room, you liar. I was, I was offered to discuss it, but no one gave me a copy of it. It was right here on the table. We had uh, extra copies of it. I could ask Mitch. You were going to send me a copy. I never got it. But, but I also asked uh, uh, the uh, contractor. Uh, I know the contractor that got the order. Well, this is what you do. You go behind the doors all the way around. That, you've become famous for that. Uh, no, I'm just looking for facts. I appreciate your help, and uh, hopefully we'll have some Goodbye. help on that. The, the comment I made last uh, week, I'll make it again, is, and thank you for the extra time. I appreciate your... Is there your, anybody your, else that has public participation? The playground. Yes, Mr. O'Sullivan. The playground should be built at the new phase six. Yeah, well, that won't happen. Mr. O'Sullivan. Good evening. I want to give you a bicentennial update. I would like to present to the town of Orange, the first selectman and the board of selectmen, two items. The first one is from Rosa DeLauro. And she submitted, and I'm not going to read it, but um, to be recorded and read into the congressional record a letter of congratulations to the town in recognition and celebration of the bicentennial anniversary. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And the first selectman suggested that this copy be put on the town's website. I also believe that we got a letter from Chris Murphy, our senator, and that should also go on the town's website. The Bicentennial Committee requested U.S. flags from Representative DeLauro's office to dis be displayed on Orange Center Road. And I'm presenting to the town a special flag. This United States flag was flown over the Capitol, the U.S. Capitol. So we have a special flag for the first selectman in the town. Thank you. Here we go. Quality, so <laughs> yes, we can use that. Maybe we can replace this one. Yeah. And then I just wanted to give an update on the summer of celebration. Founding day. Mary Shaw, the town clerk, led the celebration. It was uh, Pastor Joshua Schiff gave us an inf information, an inspirational reading, and the Chamber of Commerce also pr participated. Restaurant week was shepherd by uh, Anne-Marie Slyby, the Garden Flower Show, Patty Logioco and Gail Nixon. Big success. The Wine Tasting, Mary Ann Miller. Strawberry Festival, Bob Sigler. Mitch has been 
shepherding the uh, commemorative items, and we just want to let people know that there's a limited supply left. So if anybody wants T-shirts, mugs, keychains, we have them. I believe we might have some flags left. The yep. parade. The Bicentennial Committee was very pleased. We were thrilled that Judy Wright Williams was our Grand Marshal. We were also thrilled that the division leaders were some of the town families, the Knights, the Clarks, the Treats, the Foyers, the Manleys. I don't know how they pulled it off, but the picnic was led by Polly Demersion and Ginny Pristakis, and they did an outstanding job. Great, great time. We had a golf tournament. Um, the Orange players have been doing something in the cemetery called Grave Matters, and it's a, a really fun 45-minute uh, presentation of a lot of the history. Pat Miller and Trish O'Leary Treat. We had the fireworks. Upcoming, July 16th, a Revolutionary War reenactment by Lebanon Town Militia. And is that at the Bryan House? At the yeah. Bryan House? On the 17th is a scavenger hunt led by Kelly Martino. We have the Rotary Lobster Fest. On the 23rd of July, we have um, at the Stone Otis House Historical Society with Ginny Reinhardt. We have a goat walk behind Amity Junior High School with Dr. Messina, Dr. Messina and Santo Galatioto. We have the Fireman's Carnival. We have a Falcon demonstration on August 20th with Dr. Messina. On August 27th, we have Open Farm Day and something at the Stone Otis House. I think they're going to reenact uh, black shop, uh, black blacksmith. blacksmith stuff. We've got the <laughs> Country Fair and the Time Capsule. The Time Capsule is headed by Kevin Margano. And I could thank everyone but I'm going to forget somebody. So instead of thanking individuals, I just want to say that uh, we want to thank everybody for all of their help in the summer celebration. It was truly a team effort. The Bicentennial Committee really worked together. But it would have been impossible without Ann Denny and Lynn Plaskowitz. Throughout this process, we've had a couple people have some family issues and people had to Step back for a minute, and both Ann and Lynn picked up the picked up the the baton, and it just went well. Ann, did I forget anything? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, That's good. So. More commemoratives. <laughs> I got just one thing because I've received a lot of questions about them. Um, the painted cows <laughs> that are out front here, out in front, right now on the side. Of, I guess I should call it of the town hall by the mailbox. There are two of those large cows. Um, that is the spring of orange cow and the summer of orange cow. And there are two more. Um, they will be completing. It is uh, Kathy Sperry McGuire, Lindsay Marib, and Mary Shaw. Uh, and Lizzie Sperry oversees it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they will be doing, once uh, Kathy has a wedding coming up, and then they will be doing the fall cow, which will be unveiled at the fair. And then the winter cow will be unveiled at the holiday festival, which is the first Sunday in December, um, just so people know. And I had nothing to do with that, just so people know. I had absolutely zero to do with it. Mary Shaw came to me and told me what they were doing, and I just looked at her and said, oh, okay. I didn't quite understand it at the time. But I encourage anybody who has the opportunity to come, and you have to look at them from a distance. They're beautiful, but you have to look at them up close to see all of the different artwork that is, that is in them. I mean, these cows that will be stationed here, they'll be, I don't know if they're going to the carnival. I know they'll be at the fair. Um, that I'm not sure, but they won't be walking down Halliwell blocking Mr. Carangelo from his driveway as he was the other night. And they were not mine. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm like, oh, thank God they're not mine. Uh, 
But anyhow, so that was the only thing. Yeah. Are the, the three ladies who did those cows and the overseer of it, um, phenomenal artwork they did there. And they're really worth, for those of you out there, worth yeah. taking a look at. They're, they're really beautiful. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Pat, thank you. Really. Okay. Any other things for public participation from the audience? Seeing none from the table. Mitchell? Yes. Uh, to segue a little bit, Pat, we want to thank you also for, for being the chairman of the Bicentennial Committee, for, for shepherding us, uh, pulling people together, some of whom didn't know each other to start this process, and really have worked together as a team. And it's, it's really worked out well. And also, especially your efforts in putting together the parade. I know you had a lot to do with that parade, and it was a wonderful parade, and I think everyone enjoyed it, who was able to see it. And hopefully, if you didn't see it, you'll see it on OGAT at some point. Um, one last thing besides, please, when you come to pay your taxes with those extra dollars you're going to save, go see Ann. And um, uh, there's still some bicentennial uh, commemorative items that she has there, as, as Pat mentioned. Uh, the bicentennial clock, we are hopeful will be installed by the end of this month. Uh, we're working on it, and um, that should be quite a showpiece for many, many years to come once it's installed. Um, and the last thing has nothing to do with the bicentennial, but um, the, the bag collection and wrap collection at the transfer station, the recycling committee has been lugging those bags that people bring over to Home Depot. Home Depot has been recycling them with their wraps and bags. But I plead with people to please make sure the bags and wraps they put in the shed are clean and are bags and wraps. Garbage. Not, except, thank you, Jim, not garbage, not styrofoam, not other types of plastic, not wine bottles. Um, it's been very, very, and, and please, um, pet food bags are not considered bags and wraps for this type of purpose. So people should know that. that, that there's some honest mistakes, but the mulch bags are dirty. It has to be clean. Um, and we want to continue this program, uh, but we want to make sure we're giving Home Depot something that they can use and will be recycled along with theirs. So thank you, everyone, for their cooperation. That's it. Anybody else here? If not, I just have a very short list tonight. Um, unfortunately, we lost, that I know of, three very good members of the community since we last met, the first one being Sue Foyer Smith, who passed away suddenly. Um, very unfortunate, was a great member of the community, was a teacher in our school system for many years, was born and raised here. Um, great, great lady, big, very involved in CERT and so many other things, but she really believed in her community before she retired and even jumped to it, to it more gung-ho after she retired. And, that was really uh, quite a loss. And um, Chance Thompson, the young girl, people who ask, uh, what was her name? The girl who got struck by a motor vehicle on Old Tavern Road, coming back across in the, between the vicinity between Dip Top and Patriot Bank. Uh, the police department, just so people at home know, are still looking at that whole situation. Uh, it was a car with a driver that swung in off of the post road at a rate of speed uh, to be determined. Uh, Chance was unfortunately somewhere between the left curb and the right curb, and uh, the young woman driving the vehicle um, hit her, and unfortunately uh, Chance succumbed to her injuries, and her mother has made it very known um, through the press that, uh, you know, her organs were donated to help others. So out of a tragedy, if you can look at it that way, some good came, but still heartbreaking for that mom and uh, family, family members nonetheless. Um, it shouldn't have happened, but we probably will never know exactly how it did transpire, but uh, all around town, um, I tell people every time we're good, they're telling me they want their road paved, I said, be careful what you wish for because every time we pave a road, the traffic speed picks up on those roads and all. And, uh, you know, it's society is always in a rush and sometimes they need to slow down. And one I got a call on yesterday, uh, Father Deming passed away. Um, Father Deming came here the year of our sesquicentennial was when he, he was a relatively newly ordained uh, priest, and he came here to 
uh, Church of the Good Shepherd Episcopal on Racebrook, and most recent, then he had retired, and most recently lived on Barton Drive. His wife Carolyn had passed away last year. Maybe I don't think it's two years yet. And they lost their son David many years ago uh, to cancer. Uh, so their daughter, um, we send our thoughts to her also. She's the last of that family. But Father Deming, he was a great contributor and involved community member here in many things. I remember the uh, discussions with him about the food pantry when it was getting off the ground. He was a Rotarian. He was uh, the chaplain of the police and fire departments. And he was uh, at just so many events and all. He was a terrific guy. He's one of the few people who I could stand next to who made me look <laughs> almost normal size. Um, you know, but yeah, so unfortunately, those are three people we lost since we met last that I'm aware of and uh, very unfortunate. Uh, the Bicentennial Independence Day concert and fireworks went off extremely well. Um, it was very well received. The fireworks were raved about. What, the only thing we were really lacking was just a little breeze because that smoke, they, I could see them setting them off down there and I saw that smoke coming towards the crowd and boy, it just kept coming and it, people didn't seem to mind it. They were covering their faces with their shirts and stuff, but they weren't leaving. They were watching the fireworks and uh, uh, the, the youth and kids and their family members and friends that helped from the Crushers baseball group that helped park the cars. Without them, it would not be possible to have done that. And uh, they split the money with the town and they are receiving 2000 about $2,200 for their efforts um, for doing that. And they use that money when the kids travel up to Cooperstown to the Baseball Hall of Fame and all of that uh, program up there. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the fa Farmer's Market, Anne-Marie Slyby has that underway. It's met two weeks so far. It's every Thursday from 3.30 to 7 p.m. at the Pavilion at the Fairgrounds. And let's not forget, the Orange Fireman's Carnival is August 4th through 7th at the fairgrounds. Raffle tickets are available for purchase at the town hall and other locations. But the most important thing that we get calls on those last couple days, if you want the wristband for your children to ride all the rides for that discounted rate, you have to order them in advance. You have to go to the OVFD website, orangevfd.com com and order your your ride bracelets there are significant savings to it and with our current economic situation every dollar makes a difference but you have to order them in advance don't come to the town hall crying to us that you missed out you were away you forgot something your computer wouldn't come up uh, nowadays there's many ways to do it and uh um remember to order your wrist bracelets for the discounts for your children thank you those are my announcements Minutes to consider and act upon the minutes of the June 9th, 2022 public hearing for the Neighborhood Assistance Program application, the program establishing the new ordinance uh, to keep the minimus excess overpayments of property taxes and special meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections of any of those? If not, okay. See, and I did do a pretty good job. <laughs> All in favor? Okay, new business to consider and act on the approval of the bid recommendation from the pension board for service provider for the 401A and 457 plans. Uh, you have an enclosure on it and Eric is here from the, he is the pension board chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Thank, thank you, Jim. Um, Eric Henlon, the uh, chairman of the pension board. Um, thank you for, for having me tonight. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on what, what this entails. Um, so town sponsors uh, defined contribution plans, as Jim said, 401A and 457. Um, these plans were established, I think, around 25 years ago, the time when the defined benefit pension plans were frozen to new participants. <clears throat> We've used our current provider um, since the inception of these plans. 
Um, and during the last 25 years, the market for providers has, has changed dramatically in terms of cost, technology, um, other, other things. Um, we currently have about 220 participants with about $27 million of assets in these plans. Um, and with all that, the pension board believed that it was time to look at the overall market, compare our current provider to other offerings. Um, not that we were having any problems with the current provider, just, just to, to look at it. So um, we issued an RFP back in April uh, with the assistance from fiducian investment advisors. They're the investment advisors that we utilize for the town defined benefit plans. Uh, we received a total of eight responses to the RFP, including from our current provider. Uh, the board reviewed the submissions, narrowed this down to two providers to interview as finalists. Uh, the presentation interviews were held with the full board, and just so you know, the board includes representatives from both the police and the town employees. Um, after discussion, after the interviews, uh, the board voted unanimously to recommend a change in providers to VOIA Financial, uh, which I think you have information in front of you, based upon um, their overall technology and platform for both the participants and the town, including mobile apps, uh, continuation of support, um, similar to our existing provider, which includes at least two live on-site days for meetings with town employees, along with additional availability via phone, internet, email, the, they're, they're available for employees to speak with. Um, greater flexibility of the design of the investment fund offerings than what we have with the current provider, both in terms of fund families as well as share classes um, that we could utilize. Um, have the ability to minimize the duplication of fund types, which we're limited with our current provider. Um, and the costs to the participants um, to be reduced from approximately 35 basis points that we're paying now to about six basis points. Um, so this is going to be a significant dollar savings, uh, which goes directly to the participants in terms of additional in investment returns that, that they can get. Um, finally, the board is, will work with Fiducian to review and select the, the actual fund offerings to participants. Um, to, to assure that they have options across asset classes, including target date funds um, that have proven track records along with reasonable fee structures. Um, and this uh, will be continually monitored by Fiducian's investment group. Uh, they do the similar for the defined benefit plans. And they report to us quarterly as to um, changes in investment managers, issues, problems that they may see. Um, and They'll, they'll make ongoing recommendations should we need to uh, make any changes there. Um, and ultimately, uh, currently the 401A and 457 are handled by different providers. So by putting this all under one umbrella, this will combine the various plans under one, which helps on cost efficiency and investment options. So our recommendation is to, uh, to make the change um, to VOIA. I could also say that this should there shouldn't be any cost to the town of this. This is just um, a provider to the to the employees and the participants in the plans. Questions for Mr. Henlon. I appreciate all this information, and and I really wish I had it ahead of time a little bit more, just to really be able to go through some of the stuff. Because when I got this in the packet, I thought, well, whoa. You know, what's, what's going on? Are you making any comparisons between what they're offering? And, you know, just we saw just like a basic, this is how much it's going to cost, mm -hmm. but what, what are we getting for that? Do you know? And your explanation really gave me all the answers I needed. So okay. glad you came tonight. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I had no control over you getting the in, that, those sheets and that information. Okay. Should have gone to you sooner, I guess. Well, yes. no, but that's, that's a big help. It really is. Sure. You know, because when we sit here and make these decisions, it's nice to be able to be knowledgeable about what we're, you know, deciding on. And I think that's awesome that you do have a better um, opportunity for the employees to be working with the company to, uh, you mm -hmm. know, help them, you know, learn and, and also for them to also make some changes themselves. Yep. So, excellent. Good. Thank you. Questions? PJ. Yeah, I just wanted to add. So, with regard to the actual investment choices that Judy was alluding to, 
they're gonna you're gonna have like to like at least right with regard to the investment choices that the yes. participants have right now yes and the, then i'd like to also see some lower cost um options as well you know, th that that is, that is that's the goal is okay. to um so there will there will be investment choices among various asset classes uh, you know, equity growth, equity value, you know, international bond funds, et cetera. Um, but yes, we'll also, it's, it's a balance of looking at, you know, kind of, I would say best of class fund okay. option along with cost. Um, so it won't necessarily be every fund will be the absolute lowest cost in that class, but we'll look at, um, you know, long-term results of, of the fund uh, what the costs are and what's what would be best for uh, the participants. Great. If you're looking, if, I'm happy to help if you yeah. had any questions. Sure. Okay. Appreciate that. Not that you're not doing a good job. But. <laughs> and, and every, everybody's welcome to any of our meetings. They're very, very exciting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thrill a minute. Oh, Thank you. Any other questions? Mitch, I presume this is going to be your report. So, well, it's this is you know Eric is the chairman of the of the committee. He does a great job, and um, you know just just as an aside, because um, Jim always asks me these questions, um, the the town of Guilford uses Mission Square, uh, who we've been very happy with, and quite frankly, going into this discussion, I thought Mission Square would be our choice, but it was unanimous to go with Voya. They made a, a an excellent presentation, and as Eric mentioned, uh, two of the members of our board. Our employees, and 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 then we also had John Cifarelli and Audrey Gear there as well, who have to deal with these people, and everyone felt that the Voya had made a better presentation, would be a better fit for for the town of Orange, and it was a unanimous uh, decision to come to you tonight with this. So, okay, <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, is there a motion to? Uh, so moved. Move as, re as recommended. As recommended. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item number two. Consi <laughs> consider and act on approval of bid recommendation for replacing Catch Basin Tops, North Greenbrier, and Brentwood. Um, Highway just, there's so many of them, they're actually splitting up the Greenbriars, but this is for some of the fall paving, which will be done, and they just don't have the uh, time frame to get as many need, replaced as they need for that up there. And um, Bob, you can come up and sure. that's your thing, but it's very interesting. We had a woman call one day and got in, and she told us how terrible the condition was of Brentwood and she went on and on and I said I've been up through there I didn't think it was that bad she says well the water company was digging up for a water main or water repair and so I said well maybe there's a pothole or something you know I'll go look at it well I went up there and it turned out they were replacing all of the ductile cast iron main in the street of the whole Brentwood for some reason it went it probably when it was put in and maybe it wasn't really bedded properly or something, but they were getting a lot of leaks and all. So they pretty much ripped up a large part of the road. So then, and this is just a sidebar to this, so then I said, uh, so before I could get to Bob, he sends me an email, great news, he goes, the water company sent us a check for $85,000 towards the paving of Brentwood. And I quickly sent him back an email, no, you can't do that, you gotta get an estimate from Tilcon, see how much that road's going to cost us to, you know, repave it. Because now we have, I said, you got to hold them for, you know, from the curb to the center line. And I was ranting. And lo and behold, so he got the estimate from Tilcon. It's 95000 to pave the whole road. <laughs> so, so we made out on that one. But we've had other ones where we haven't always made out so well. So they went out to bid to replace Catch Basin Tops on the Brentwood and the um, North Greenbrier over there. And so with that said, Bob. Yeah, I mean, it, usually our guys do all the work, but they've got, they're doing, they're planning 11 roads this year, and they just couldn't get it all done in time. Um, yeah, the last time I guess we bid it out was uh, 2014. 
for Wheeler's Farms Road. Again, just too much work. But normally we do do it ourselves. But this year, if we if we did it all in house, they would have to cancel the dates we have, and it would either be late fall or have to go into the spring. So we knew it was, we thought it would be more than the bid amount, and it turned out to be that way. So we bid it. Did if you see, we got a lot of interest. I think we had eight bids. Um, the low bidders known to the town has done work here. So it should be a pretty easy. It's the kind I know. It's the kind of bids you like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Lots of bidders. Yeah. Nice and neat. Yeah. Yep. It's, it, there were some that were very tight, so it tells you where it should be. Yeah. You left two hundred dollars uh, on the and, table. Uh, you know, two hundred dollars between the two low low bidders, and uh, then just a couple more dollars between the next couple. Yeah. So it's uh, very fair, and uh, they say they can get it done. Okay. So I mean. They better. So the recommendation uh, on this one, I guess, Bob, is Ciola? Yep, they were the low bid. So Bob has made that recommendation. They have said they can get the work done. They have done other work for us in town. And uh, that's it in a nutshell. Good. I make a motion. Second. Let's do it. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, item easy. item number three. <laughs> I figured out why you were. <laughs> no, is to is to consider an act on the request to hang the banner on Orange Center Road to promote the uh, Rotary Lobster Fest and request the customary fees be waived for the use of the High Plains Community Center kitchen. Non Bob. <laughs> no, my name's Dan Bob. May. I'm representing <laughs> Orange Rotary. Uh, Bob actually had to go to Cape Cod today. It was really horrible. Oh, so it's just, uh, so just really horrible. Yeah, you know, so the Rotary Club will host it. I think it's, it's it's either the 30th or the 31st Lobster Fest uh, at the High Plains Community Center, the weekend after the the, the, car, the fire department's carnival uh, yep. on August 13th. Uh, we're requesting that as soon as their banner comes down, our could, ours could go up uh, across uh, Orange Center Road, and then also to waive the fee associated with the um, use of the kitchen. Oh, great. What's the cost of lobsters right now? Yeah, but they're actually about, about the same as last year. Really? Actually, the only thing that isn't going up is lobster and steak. Everything else is going up. The lobster and steak are holding their they're holding yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lobster seem to be about ten dollars a pound. Twelve dollars a pound, maybe. Yeah. yeah I mean, if you want pick lobster are, meat or something, is more. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're sixty dollars for two. You can't beat it. Milford wants eighty-five for two. So. <laughs> I just saw their ad. Yeah, on Facebook. I said, oh my god. Uh, so before the price goes up, so yes, right. <laughs> <Second. Water. laughs> and um, so the annual Rotary Club Lobster Festival this year is on Saturday, August 13th at the Pavilion at the fairgrounds. And where are tickets available? We've Everything's online. So the, All so, right. So, so if you look up the Orange Rotary Club on online, you should be able to order your tickets from the Orange Rotary Club online. It could be, is it Rotary Club of Orange? Rotary Club of Orange. Yeah. Rotary, Club, Rotary of or Club of Orange. Okay. Rotary Club of Orange. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, is there a motion to be made with those requests? All, of, all motion made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Item number four is to consider an act that requests to approve tax refunds totaling Fifteen thousand nine hundred forty-three dollars and twenty-one cents. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All right, Mitch. I'm going to presume you that was your report before. It was. Um, there are no more, so we just need a motion to close to go into executive session to discuss pay rates. Uh, PJ. Motion, motion made. Second. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. See you next month.
come back in from executive session at 845, and uh, there is no action to take at this time on our executive session. It will be continued to our August meeting, which will be August 10th, which all will be resolved. And I thank you for that. Oh. Sorry. Do it again. There is no action to be taken on our executive session at this time. All will be resolved at our August 10th uh, meeting. We thank you all. Is there a motion to adjourn at 846? So made. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We're, we are adjourned. Thank you, Chris.